So now we've got some vocabulary to get out of the way, and we've already talked about the word chiral, and if you're chiral, then you and your mirror image are not the same. And the two different versions of that compound, the two mirror images, would be referred to as enantiomers of each other. So, and one thing you should know about enantiomers is that they typically have the same physical properties, the same melting point, same boiling point, same polarity, etc. And we'll find out that makes them a little bit of a pain in the butt to separate, because uh, it's usually taking advantage of a difference in physical properties uh, that allows us to separate compounds. So if two enantiomers have the same physical properties, we'll have a tough time uh, separating them one from another. Uh, we also say that chiral compounds are optically active. And it turns out they rotate what's referred to as plane polarized light. So it turns out light having wave-like properties, that light can, that wave-like property can have an orientation associated with it. Uh, and in this case, if we filter out every orientation except largely one, we would say that's plane polarized light. We'll talk more about this in a little bit, but it turns out if you shine this plane polarized light through a solution of a chiral compound, that light gets rotated. The orientation changes. So whereas if the compounds, you know, if the solution doesn't have chiral compounds, then the light won't get rotated as you shine it through. Kind of a weird thing, and I have no idea, you know, who took the time to, uh, you know, figure this all out. Um, but that's kind of the deal. Chiral compounds are optically active as they rotate plane polarized light. We'll find out a chiral compounds are not optically active as they don't rotate plane polarized light. So one last piece of vocabulary here is a racemic mixture. So these chiral compounds are optically active and they rotate light. Uh, we talked about these two enantiomers that are mirror images of each other. What we what, what peculiar thing we notice is that they actually being optically active rotate plane polarized light by exactly the same degree in exactly opposite directions. So, you know, one might rotate light clockwise and one might rotate light counterclockwise, and we can define them that way. Uh, in this case, we might call one of them a plus isomer, one of them the minus isomer, or something along these lines. One of them might refer to as D and one lowercase l. Uh, based on how they rotate light. But the big thing is that they rotate light exactly to exactly the same degree in exactly opposite directions. So it gives rise to a new term called racemic mixture. If I have a solution that's 50-50 of the pair of enantiomers, then half my solution is trying to rotate light one way, half the solution is trying to rotate light the other way, and overall, plane polarized light doesn't get rotated through that solution. So it turns out a racemic mixture uh, is optically inactive as a result. So here we're going to take a look at an example of an achiral compound. And again, an achiral compound is identical to its mirror image. Uh, and we also said that achiral compounds are optically inactive. They don't rotate plane polarized light. Uh, and so we see an example here. So if you notice, the carbon atom with the two chlorines, the methyl and the ethyl, is not a chiral center. Uh, in this case, it's not bonded to four different things as the two chlorines are identical. So, and as a result, these compounds are not chiral. Uh, and in this case, they're perfect mirror image of each other, but if I flip this compound on the right around, rotated 180 degrees, it would superimpose perfectly with the compound on the left. They're exactly identical, exactly superimposable. So and that's the hallmark of an achiral compound. That's the definition, is that an achiral compound, again, is the same, superimposable with its mirror image. So now that we know what chiral centers are, we often have you identify chiral centers in a molecule. And one thing to note is that chiral centers, again, are tetrahedral atoms, therefore sp3 hybridized. And therefore, anybody that's not sp3 hybridized, you can just kind of get rid of. So we're going to evaluate every carbon atom in this structure. And all these sp2 ones, we're just going to cross them out. They are not chiral centers, and they're never going to be chiral centers. So anything sp2 hybridized. So from there, I'm going to go to any atom that has at least two identical groups. So like this carbon is bonded to three identical hydrons, not a chiral center. Same with this one, bonded to three identical hydrons, and this one, and this one, and this one. All bonded to three identical hydrons. This one's bonded to two identical hydrons, so he won't have four different groups. He's not going to be a chiral center either. So, but the carbons we got left, this guy is bonded to four different groups. He's bonded to the carbon of this methyl. And this carbon on the right and this carbon on the left are definitely not equivalent. So, uh, and then he's got a hydrogen that's a dashed position not drawn in. He does have four different groups. So he is indeed a chiral center. Same with this guy. So he's bonded to the carbon on the left and the carbon on the right, which again are not equivalent. The OH and then a hydrogen, so four different groups. So we've got this carbon here, also bonded to four different groups. He's got the carbon of a methyl, this carbon on the right, and the carbon on the left, again, are definitely not equivalent, and then a hydrogen also not drawn in. So on the other hand, though, this carbon right here, it's tricky. Oftentimes we show stereochemistry. Uh, 
uh, wedges and dashes. Uh, and that's usually an indicator that, hey, it might be a chiral center, but be careful. This guy's not a chiral center. This carbon over here is a CH3, and this carbon up here is also a CH3. And so as a result, this carbon right here is not bonded to four different things having two identical CH3s. He is not a chiral center. And so as a result, we just have those three chiral centers in this molecule. That's kind of like your uh, systematic way of identifying all the chiral centers in a molecule.